challenges. Let's talk about some solutions. What do you see as a way of correcting and stopping uh, some of the issues and challenges that are facing our people today? As it relates to solutions, there's two. One is proactionary and preventive, and the other is reactionary and based on coming in after the problem has been created to do something about it. Let's start with the proactionary institution. If you look at most of what America uses, uh, at least 50% of the inventions that made this country famous came out of the minds of African Americans and came out of our minds before we was allowed to go to school with white students. I think that we have to rethink uh, our push for school uh, desegregation. I think that we have to go back to building our own schools for our children. We have to look at our definition of education. Up until now, the definition of education for African-American youth has been to teach them how to function within the American social order, how to be a part, how to be an employee. That needs to change. My definition of education is the art of teaching children how to acquire protect and maintain power. In other words, I am not interested in preparing my child to work for Microsoft. I'm interested in preparing my child to build the corporation that's going to rival Microsoft's dominance in the computer age. So we have to shift from working for people as opposed to dominating the industries. Five sciences need to be taught to African-American children that I don't see being taught by any school in this country, not all at once, be it private, public, parochial, or charter. Number one is agricultural science. There is no culture without agriculture. Our children have to be taught how to grow their food, and they must also be taught agronomical science so they can actually test the soil to make sure that the fruits and vegetables that they do grow actually have some nutritional content in them. So that's number one. You got to be able to sustain life. Our people are dying from all sorts of preventable diseases. Most of our deaths are not natural deaths. They are preventable due to poor diet, poor nutrition. Agricultural science helps to deal with that. The second science that should be taught is nutritional and dietary science. In addition to learning how to grow the food, you have to know when to eat, how to eat, and what to eat. Okay, you go back 75 years ago, there was breakfast, there was lunch, and there's dinner. Now you have African-Americans eating all day long, never giving their stomach time to rest. And the research showed that there's a direct relationship between how often you eat and how long you live, even if you do eat healthy. The third science is political and military science. Our children don't just need to be taught history. History is important, but it's not enough. They have to be able to relate it to the present. So history and political science goes together. History, our experience of the past. Political science, our experience of today. Why is there a mass incarceration project going on amongst African-American males? Why don't public schools work? What's going on with black male-female relationships? And are there some outside influences that's contributing to the destruction of the African-American family? We need our children to be politically conscious of what's being done. Why is President Obama president of the United States? And is it necessarily a good thing for African people, not just here, but in Africa as well? Then we also have to teach them economic and financial science, the science of money. African Americans are financially illiterate, even those of us who are well educated, financially illiterate. I want our students to be able to build multinational corporations, to be able to invest in the resources under the ground of our mother continent of Africa and bring them to ground so that they can be used to rebuild our race internationally. Uh, military science, so they can uh, understand military strategy. Uh, the black community globally and locally is at war. There's war against black men. There's war against black people. You see it every day with the abuse that we suffer from the police. We just had a situation in California with a, a former officer Dorner who actually wrote a letter, you know, detailing the racism that he experienced on the police force in L.A. Our children need to be taught these things. They also need to be taught spiritual science so they can understand their connection to the, to the divine. We are a divine people. And so astrological science and the teaching of ancient African spiritual systems above and beyond Islam and Christianity, I think, is going to be key towards our resurgence in the modern world. And the last science is the science of the black family, the science of the black man and the black woman. The black man has forgotten how to respect his queen and the black woman has forgotten how to respect her king. She has to be taught the black man as a science and a black man has to be taught the black woman as a science. Those six sciences are going to serve as the cornerstone for a global African revolution and renaissance and they're not being taught right now. So the preventive solution is to build our own schools. It is not realistic to expect middle class white women to properly educate black boys. It is never going to happen. Now, let's talk about the reactionary things that we can do. What we can do right now 
as the situation is. Black parents need to organize themselves into a independent black parents association. Independent means we don't take money from other people and we don't allow others to participate in our organizational efforts. That's been a big mistake of African-American people throughout our history. You look at other groups in this country, they organize by themselves as you're supposed to do. Family business is private but not so with African-Americans. We include everybody to our table and wonder why we can't get ahead because we're not doing things for ourselves and by ourselves. Every black uh, public school district in this country should have an independent black parents association that consists of four committees. Number one, special education committee to investigate the special education abuse of black children and also to investigate how the special ed money is being spent. Special education is a business. It is a hustle. It is a racket. Whenever I diagnose a child with a disability and place them in special education, the school district gets extra money every year that that child is in special ed. That money should be spent on those students, but we find that it's not. It's being spent on everything but those students. The second of the four committees should be school discipline. The United States Department of Education just came out with research a few months ago that said African-American boys are being suspended and expelled for the same offenses as white boys, but in an excessive fashion. OK, so clearly there is uh, academic racism there because even the United States DOE is saying that it exists. We have to investigate which schools are doing it, which teachers are responsible, which principals are responsible. Let's step in and do something about it. Third committee, school finance. Where is the money going? My argument is not that my argument is that money is not our biggest problem in education. It is not. Yes, you can always use more money, but that's not why our children are not learning. We don't have a budget crisis. We have a spending priority crisis. If you notice, the football team always gets what they need and the basketball team always gets what they need. But the students in the classroom don't always get what they need. I would argue that although we have a budget issue, more money is needed. The bigger problem is the priorities upon which the district and principals are spending their money. And a fourth committee is school policy. There are local school policies that are in place that detrimentally and negatively affect African-American children. I give you an example. In some school districts, if you use profanity or make a threat against someone, you're automatically referred for school expulsion. Those should not automatically be expellable offenses. They might be suspendable offenses, but to remove a child from an education for the rest of their childhood, we have to really look critically at these types of policies, the zero tolerance policies that get you kicked out of school if you bring something to school that even remotely resembles a weapon, even if you have no history of misconduct in the school. So we need a policy committee to investigate. Those four committees organized by African-Americans who are economically independent of the school district, but come into the school to work with the educators and lawmakers to bring about necessary change could get us some progress until such time that we build our own schools. And there's no reason why every African-American child in America cannot go to a school that is run by their own community. African-American people in this country gross a billion dollars in the American economy. We are the richest group of Africans on the face of the earth and the 10th to 12th um, richest group of people on the face of the earth. And with that type of money, we could build all the schools that our children need so there is no excuse. We could take our Christmas money. Philadelphia, we spent $3 billion on Christmas gifts. New York City, 8 to $12 billion on Christmas gifts. We could just take our Christmas money and build a new educational reality for our children. In building those institutions, there will be the pushback will be, uh, well, first of all, I don't want my, I want my child to have a wider exposure. And if you're saying that it's not the environment, it is the instructor, why can't an instructor who is not African-American, who is committed, who believes the children can learn, would not be suitable in the classroom? And what, what do you say to parents who are concerned with their child going to school and coming home safely? We are looking at at least five deaths in this area that have occurred with young people on school grounds or going to school, coming from schools. There is a lot going on in the community where you would have parents say that it's not just going to school. There is a whole environment that is so detrimental and so toxic that before we get to building a school, we have to get to having a community. We have to have some kind of understanding that the spirituality you talked about, that a life is valued, that a life that looks like you or looks like, doesn't look like you is valued. And how do you get to those challenges? 
and additionally, it looks it, you, you're sounding um, excellent, and you're sounding Sankofish, uh, looking back to go forward because we had that kind of mentality and drive where we wanted our own schools, and we shipped school students through it who came out excellent because they had that loving environment. But how realistic is that to go into a community and say that you have got to build a school? in order for your child to learn if your position is that what you really need are teachers who care. First, I would say that any teacher can teach an academic skill if they're committed to the child. The issue is not that white educators or Asian educators or Hispanic educators can't teach African-American children. That's not the issue. The question is, do they come to the table with the commitment and compassion to reach those children? That's number one. Number two, it also relates to your definition of education. If your definition of education is only the imparting of academic skills, teaching a child how to read, write, and do arithmetic, any teacher of any color can do that. But if your definition of education is like mine, which is greater than reading, writing, and arithmetic, and is about preparing the children of an oppressed group of people to actually take back power in how to survive an unjust society, okay, that cannot be taught by somebody who didn't experience it. Only a black man can prepare a black boy for how to deal with racism in the moment. When you're pulled over by the police, don't react emotionally, young man, okay? Simply speak to him by calling off the numbers on his uh, badge ID, and you refer to him as that. Yes, Officer 3519, how can I help you? Did I do something wrong, Officer 3519? When a teacher disrespects you in a classroom, you don't respond. You put that down on paper, and you give it to your parent, and then it's your parent's job to come back and fight that war with the teacher. Not you, you're a child, and you have to be respectful. We who are black men, we've been through that. We can teach it. Can't no white man teach a black boy how to deal with white racism? Just like can't no white woman teach a black girl how to deal with the effects against her self-esteem that she's going to have to deal with by her skin being dark or her hair being being curly or kinkle. So there's a lot that has to relate to education, including knowledge of self that cannot come from someone from outside your community. It has to come from the inside if that's your definition. But Very good question. Here's the key from my perspective. Education is a community institution. That's exactly why I argue that we need to build our own schools for our children. Education is a function of the community and should be run, supervised, implemented, and administered by the community, not an outside group. So I don't think we're disagreeing there. I think we're making the same point. Because schooling is a function of culture and because schooling is a function of the community, it should be done within that community. So that actually makes my argument that we need to build our own schools because only we can impart the correct cultural ideal and vision into our children. They can't get that on the outside. That's exactly the reason why we need to build our own schools. I think those things are separate. I think administering the education, administering the economics, administering the spirituality, and looking after the needs of the family are all aspects of uh, the organization of a community. So I don't see them as separate. I don't see them as being uh, in a prioritized order, as being hierarchical. Uh, I see them more as being horizontal, things that occur because things that uh, co-occur together. Um, in order to solve our issues, it's going to need, we're going to need a multi-systemic, uh, multimodal approach, which means we're doing different things all at the same time. We're taking care of the family at the same time we're educating. We're educating at the same time we're employing. We're employing at the same time we're taking care of the psychological needs. We're taking care of the psychological needs at the same time we're looking at our political situation. So I don't see as one necessarily being uh, uh, more important than the other. They are simultaneously important because each is crucial to our well-being and future development. I would say this, our biggest drawback is our mindset, as you said, post-traumatic slavery disorder, the petty differences. And I think in order for us to get out of that, we're going to have to do what? Grow, raise uh, uh, an entire new generation of African children who are able to think the way that we need them to think. Going back to Dr. Carter G. Woodson's book, Miseducation of the Negro. What did he tell us? The college educated black is seldom of any use to his race. The education he gets in college educates him against the best interests of his race. Before he went to college, he saw himself as a part of his community and saw himself as being proud of being a member of that community. But once he comes back from college, be it an HBCU or predominantly white school, he sees himself as different. So you have a schizophrenic political mindset being created in educated blacks that makes them liabilities as opposed to possibilities for their people.